Welcome into the start of the Mike Norvell area. How many times are we going to say that? I think like the first tour of duty was the start of the Mike Norvell era. Today is the start of the Mike Norvell era, first day of spring practice. I think in preseason camp, it'll be the start of the Mike Norvell era. You said how many times are we going to say that? How many I feel times like are we? You, you said well, it. You know, is that look, the royal we? Yes, the royal we. Uh, hopefully not. That's the last one. <laughs> but I feel like we're going to say it in Atlanta I mean, for the West Virginia game. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to definitely say it in the start of preseason camp. Yeah. It's the first camp. Well, this is the first spring football practice for Mike Norvell. Um, and we just got got done watching the entire practice, which is something that hasn't happened here since Coach Bowden was a young, spry I feel head like, coach. didn't we get to watch Willie's first spring practice? I feel like we watched one yeah, from we, start we did to get, finish, we, yeah, we and got then a couple that was a wrap. Yeah. We didn't see another one. Um, but this is daily. Like, this yeah. is what we're going to get to do, uh, uh, theoretically, yeah. for, the, for the whole Mike Norvell era. Yeah, until we screw up and he kicks us out. Right, well. But for the most part, coming. that's the plan right now. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see some – Early, uh, you know, you could tell it was a first practice. I sure. mean, it wasn't like a smooth, clean running machine. I mean, there were situations you could hear equipment guys kind of trying to figure out where the next drill. I mean, just to, they've done some walkthroughs to prepare for it, but you could almost sense there was like some opening night jitters, you know, especially for like the lower level staff members and people like that, just trying to make sure everything is in the right place. Because you could tell the big theme is accountability for the players. Sure. But you can also tell like the, the staff, the support staff guys feel the accountability as well. Yeah, you know, to that point, um, yeah, it might have felt like it was more like a, um, the, there were some jitters or they weren't. there were some things that weren't running 100% smoothly, which is normal for a spring practice. But the difference, Ira, between the practices we used to watch and this different. practice is uh, night and day doesn't even do it justice. It's like night and uh, apples. I mean, it's compl- it, they don't even make sense. There's no, there's no comparison. And, you know, we talked to Blackman and we talked to Travis. I wanted to talk to James Blackman about it. was I seeing what I thought I was seeing as far as the difference. Because, you know, the last year and a half, we didn't get to watch much of the whole practice. Um, but he's, he said, he's like, oh, no, it's much more structured. It's much more organized. And there's much more attention to detail. And that goes to, like, um, special teams. You know, I was watching them special teams, and they were working on punt, uh, punt blocking. Mm-hmm. Not blocking punts, blocking for the punt yeah. returner. And they're so detailed that they're yelling at a kid because he, did, he wasn't looking over his right shoulder to run back to his spot to get in line to block. He's like, you gotta run over your right shoulder, run over your right shoulder. And it's things like that, just little things. Dropping the ball, if you drop a pass, go back and pick it up and run with it. It's things like that that you just, I don't know if it's unique to this coaching staff, but it's certainly unique to this program over the last to co- what, couple of years. Yeah, it's what they've been doing. And, and really is across the board, no matter what position group you went to. Like I was watching um, the Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator, working with the defensive backs on how, how they place their hands when they're trying to shed blocks. And your thumb can't be facing in, your thumb's got to be facing up, your elbows have to be in. A lot of fundamental things. Obviously, it's the first day of practice. But again, that attention to detail should be important, um, should be fruitful yeah. uh, over the course of time. And it sounded like, as you said, we talked to James Blackman, Jordan Travis. Or we talked to really the top three, the three scholarship quarterbacks, sure. James Blackman, Jordan Travis, and uh, Tate Rodmaker. And the two older guys, certainly, as you, as you alluded, definitely seemed to feel like it was a very different, uh, but in a good way. What was day one like for you guys? Oh, it was great. Really different than last year. It was very organized. More structure, more detail, and more focus. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily. They were they were throwing the predecessor under the bus, but they certainly weren't weren't not trying to. You know what I yeah. mean? They weren't they weren't like uh, mincing, mincing their, their words. words. They were they were being honest and saying no. It's a lot more organized. It's a lot more structured. And James Blackman was like, look, he goes last year, the last two years, I thought I got a little too comfortable with missing throws. He's like, I you know, and he goes, my first year with Jimbo, there'd be times where I'd come out here and not miss a throw all practice. Again, because you had the taskmaster behind you. Get yelling at you about everything. Maybe you're a little more focused and guided in, and maybe he didn't have that the last. Apparently, didn't have that the last two years. And I asked him, "Is that Dillingham or Norvell that's that's kind of in your ear telling you when you do something wrong?" He goes, "It's everybody. It's the training staff. It's it's uh, the managers. It's everybody telling you when you do something wrong." And again, that's just it's just different. You know, um, I, it's hard to really put into words how much different it is. But also, I thought, um, you know, I watch Norvell a lot. And, you know, he's just going to be a guy that runs from drill to drill, yelling at everyone. You know, he's, he's talking to Tamari and Terry before a play or right after a play because he didn't like the way he lined up in his stance. He wasn't putting enough pressure on his front knee is what he was saying. And he got in a position and showed him what he meant. And he was doing that with everyone, all at every drill. Like, he, he, 
he's out there really coaching, really detail oriented, and even from drill to drill, he's in, he's into it. Yeah, another thing I, I thought was impressive was they really worked on the guys who were who are giving a look. Like so, if the defensive yeah. backs are working on a drill, some of the other DBs will be acting like receivers or acting like running backs. Well, if the if those guys were not running full speed, if they weren't giving a great look, the coaches would get onto them about it. Uh, the phrase I heard a couple guys, you know, make sure you're serving your teammates, make sure you're giving them the best look possible. Again, those are, it's a lot of little things. It's not like yeah. one overriding thing you could say is so different, but it's all those little things kind of put together. Not going through the motions either. And, and uh, you would hope that would never happen on a first spring practice anyway. But I remember there was a drill where the running backs were coming out of the flat and it, depending on what the linebacker did, they would either try to shake them and get open or they would just go directly out into the flat. And, you know, there was one time where the running back, the, the coach would play the linebacker. He'd be there, like, come to me. And the linebacker, he backed up in, uh, I think it was a, a grad assistant. And uh, he, he kind of did a little, the running back did a little shake and went out to the flat. And he's like, who are you making a move on? There's nobody there. Don't just do it because you think you're supposed to do it. Look at what you're seeing. If there's nobody there, there's no need to make a move. Just get your ass out to the, sorry, get, get your butt out to the uh, flat where you're supposed to be. Again, little things. And we're going to be talking about that a lot, obviously, probably for the next yeah. six months. But um, it does matter. Those things do matter. They do add up. And I think uh, also Norvell is not at all um, worried about getting on you yeah. if you make a mistake and there are a bunch of people around watching. He does not care. He's going to tell you what you thought, what he thinks about that effort and what he thought about that play. Yeah, there were about, I don't know, maybe 150, 200 high school football players yeah, and coaches, coaches yeah. uh, out here at practice today. They're having their junior day as well. We have complete coverage at warchant.com of some of the prospects who are here for visits. But also, um, they were all over the field, and, there, and there's media out there as well. And like you said, there were two or three instances well, probably more than that, where Norvell really went after for guys either for effort, usually for effort, that type of thing, or attitude, um, and uh, you know, definitely coaching that type of thing. In terms of player you know, observations, we you know we got to see a lot of guys that we haven't seen in a while, or some of the new freshmen that we saw. Obviously, some of the true freshmen, early enrollees like Stephen Dix and Tate Rodemaker, yeah. Brian Robinson. You could tell that they already start to look the part. Uh, and then the returning guys, you know, watching the quarterbacks, James Blackman seemed like. You know, he's obviously been through it a lot more. He's been out there three or four years, still a little bit inconsistent. Um, Jordan Travis, I thought, threw the ball. This is the most we've seen of Jordan Travis. Yeah. He threw the ball pretty well, man. Yeah, he made a couple. He made a in seven on sevens. He made a really nice, nice pass down the seam. Uh, yeah, he did. He threw the ball. He was putting it on their chest. You know, there were a couple that were uh, yeah. worm burgers, but everybody has those. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, the way he was handled last year, you're like, he might not. He must not be able to throw it yeah. to you know a little child. Like he must just not be able to get the ball airborne because they would never let him throw. Uh, but no, he goes out there and he looks the part. It's not like oh, what was that? I mean, he he has a nice arm. Uh, he looked pretty. He to me, he was the most accurate of the three today. And that's again, that's one practice. One day in shells. They're in shells. It legit matters not at all. But he did have a. He I thought he was the most accurate of the three. And Who then, else stood out? Anybody stand out? I got one for you. What you got? It's not really a surprise. You're not going to be stunned by this. I thought Asante Samuel was the best player on the field. That dude is really good. And he was guarding Warren Thompson. By the way, looks incredible physically. I don't know if he's if it's it's all going to come together. But physically, he is big, and he looks as fast, or he has the fast twitch that even a Terry does. I mean, you, you can't tell those dudes apart. He looked really good physically. But Asante would either cover him or cover Terry. And he must have had four or five pass breakups on fades and on back shoulder throws. Man, he's just really, really good. Yeah, also Emmett Rice, we've talked a lot yeah. about, and we're going to write about more. The weight gain he's, he's had, I mean, he looks like a linebacker now. He always, to me, looked kind of like a strong safety trying to play linebacker. He was fast and athletic, but, but really undersized. He said he's put on 18 pounds over the last couple months, and you can see it. I mean, he looks better put together, and he said he runs as well now as he ever has. So, and he said, I think he wants to put on another 5 or 10 pounds. Yeah. But he's a guy that, look, I mean, he could play in the middle of a defense now, whereas – in the past, you thought he always had to kind of be on the edges. Um, had a little pressure kick at the end. I think that was Fitzgerald that had to do the, the, uh, the pressure kick. I'm pretty sure. They had the whole team, like, gathered around the, the kick. And the way they do it is basically they end the practice. I guess this is probably how they're going to end, end every practice is they have the whole team kind of surround the kicker. I mean, they are within five yards of the kicker. And basically the way Norvell explained it to them is their job is to make it as miserable as possible for him. They're all screaming at the top of their lungs at the kickers. He's trying to make this pressure kick. If he makes it, and it's not a, a, a big 
whole production seven step uh, drop to kick or uh, run to kick. Basically, they just take two steps and kick the field goal. And uh, if he makes it, they're done. If he's not, then they have accountability. And if the players aren't making enough noise, if Norvell feels like oh, they're right. not making it tough enough, they have accountability, which you assume means running. Uh, he made the kick, so they got to finish early. Um, but, it, you know, again, it, it seemed like accountability, attention to detail, those were probably the two biggest themes. Ten wins? Oh, 12, I think. Oh, yeah! Probably. Clemson's going to be tough, always, but well, it's here. I'm, I'm with the AC Championship. Oh, okay, AC, so you're thinking 12-1, and one, yeah. they lose maybe. They're going to they're backdoor into the AC Championship game. They're not going to be Clemson head-to-head. <laughs> head. But Clemson's going to lose twice. Yes, and they're going <laughs> to okay, sneak Okay, sure. In. That, yeah, seems, that seems likely. <laughs> uh, it was, a, you know, overall a pretty good first day. We'll, we'll have plenty of coverage coming at warchant.com. We got to talk to all the quarterbacks, uh, Jaden Lars would be, uh, a couple other players, Emmett Rice. Rice, and then yeah. we uh, – and then we'll have observations, complete coverage. You've got a story coming. I'll have a three, two, one coming. And watch Aslan's the, got video highlights. Watch the interviews because I, I do think they're insightful. Uh, we, we won't be able to do these interviews for the rest of time, but the differences between the previous staff and this staff, that was a lot of the commentary today, a lot of the interviews, a lot of the questions to the players were about that. And I think it's really insightful and illuminating what they had to say. So watch them. You should always watch them anyway, but especially today. Then we're going over to basketball to watch Trent Forrest's senior day and Dom, Dom's senior day. Florida State trying to lock up the ACC. I have complete coverage of that. And then the next practice is on Tuesday. So stay with uh, Warchant.com.